and welcome to Restoration Ministries. I'm uh, Pastor Jeff. So we're coming to you via video, actually from my home tonight, uh, because we're uh, unable to have the uh, Civic Center uh, throughout the month of May. So it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be coming to you with a word from the Lord. I'm excited about what God has to share with us this evening. And so my message uh, tonight is called Stand Your Ground. You know, that term, stand your ground, it was originated, uh, some believe, in the 1600s uh, during periods of war, talking about, you know, not relenting and not giving up ground in battle. And so, you know, the Bible tells us that we don't wage war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual forces in dark places. And so I want to encourage you today that God is for you. God is on your side. God is the commander in chief. And God is leading and guiding you in this battle that is not yours, but the Lord's. And so it's important, though, to understand that we are members of God's army. You know, like you remember the, as a little kid, you know, uh, I'm in the Lord's army. You know, I may never fight in the infantry, uh, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery, but, but I'm in the Lord's army. Well, that's kind of where we are, and we're being called by God Almighty to stand our ground, to not let the enemy who prowls like a roaring lion, looking to who he may destroy, to have any ground as, we, in, as far as we are concerned. And so tonight I wanna give you some scripture to encourage you to stand your ground. Stand your ground may be, you know, you may be having uh, promises that aren't being fulfilled that, that you find in the scripture. That's the enemy trying to take ground. I'm encouraging you tonight to stand that ground. You may have attacks where you don't have provision that you need. God says he's the provider. We're going to be calling to stand our ground. You may be having situations and circumstances that are being, uh, where you're being buffeted by the enemy. I'm encouraging you tonight that God is with you. He is for you. He's going in front of you, it says, and behind you. He, in fact, his presence is all around you. And that if he be for you, who can stand against you? So tonight, though, we're being called by God Almighty in the battle that we face, in, the, in the, the things that we go through in this life, to stand our ground. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. We're talking about standing our ground. Let me read that. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen to those words, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord's work is not done in vain, but it's going to accomplish the purpose by which he set it out to do. So I want to talk about standing your ground as it's calling for here in 1 Corinthians, as, as the Apostle Paul is writing. How can we do that? And one of the things I want to I want to focus on three things actually. Number one is that we can stand based on God's promise. You might say, Pastor Jeff, you know what? Sometimes it seems like more than I can handle. It seems like more than I can take, more than I can bear. Well, I want to tell you that you can withstand. God tells you in His Word that He's not going to give you anything that you. You can't uh, withstand, that it will not overtake you. But if we lean into him and understand that he is on our side, we can survive and we can stand our ground. So first and most importantly, God is for us. There's all kinds of scriptures we can turn to. I'm gonna turn to Psalms 33 and verse 11. It says this, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. You know, the counsel of the Lord, you can interpret that in other translations into different words, you know, but it's like the calling of the Lord, the direction of the Lord, the plans that the Lord has for you. You know, the Bible tells us that he, even as he was forming us inside of our mother's womb and before, before the beginnings of time, he knew us and he had a plan for you, plan for you to prosper and to have a future. It's not about a prosperity gospel, but it's about trusting in a God who owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills. It's about knowing that he is for us. It's about knowing that he, as he did to Abraham, provides in the most dire of situations. 
He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. And that when we look and say, you know what, God's plans then, what does it say? God's counsel, the things that he tells us, they stand forever. His plans are even for our generations. You know, I hear all the time people talking about generational curses. I like to talk about generational blessings. I have a rich heritage in my family, going back to grandmothers and grandfathers and great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers and even before that. But I had the pleasure of getting to know my great-grandparents, at least my great-grandmothers, and they were wonderful people. I saw the legacy that my grandmother, my grandfather, on both my mom and my dad's side, have passed on to our generations. And I'm so thankful for that. I see what my mother and my father, who now are called grandma and grandpa great, have passed on to me and on to my generation and now on to my grandchildren. The promises and the counsel of God are forever and for all generations. We can stand because we know that it's not like these promises go away. So when the Bible says he is for us, not against us, when the Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper, when the Bible tells us words of encouragement that he is working things out for our good, even though what the enemy intended for evil, that God is turning it for good, those are the promises that we should take a firm stand on because of why? Because God's promises are all yes and amen. They are never taken back, never taken away. He's never going to say something in his word and declare and decree a thing that he doesn't bring to pass. Indeed, yes, all of his promises are yes and amen. So we can stand knowing that we're standing on a firm foundation. We're standing on something that is immovable. The Bible says he changes not. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Isn't that good news? In the changing world that we live in, where, where, where our standards are being compromised, where, where things that we would have accepted as just uh, normal uh, are not normal now, God's promises are not that way. They're stable. They're solid. He is the solid rock, Jesus Christ, being the chief cornerstone that we can build our lives upon. So how can we stand in this world that we face with so much uncertainty? We can stand because, first of all, God said it, and if he said it, he meant it, and he's going to bring it to pass. God's promises are true. We can stand because God's promises are true. Number two, we stand because we have a responsibility to take action, and it should be our resolve. You know, we should be unswervingly committed to the fact that God, what he says, what he said about us, what he's promised us, the calling he's given to us, that we will never let that go. Now, I myself, you know, can say, you know, there are things God has promised to me that I have not seen come to pass. But you know what? I believe with all of my heart that they're going to come to pass. There are things that I've experienced in my life that are not consistent with the will of God for my life because why we face an adversary. But if we stay steadfast, which is what the Bible says in the verse that we opened up with, 1 Corinthians, let's go back to that uh, 15 and 58. Let's look at that. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, steadfast and immovable. That word steadfast, I did some study on that. It means this in the original language. It means to be firm. It means to have a solid or stable seat or base, something that's seated, something that's well stationed, something that is not given to fluctuation or moving off course. God established a course for your life before you were even born. We need to seek him, and the Bible says when we seek him, we will find him. And when we seek him, he will give us the direction and the guidance for our life. We all have purpose. We all have calling, and we need to be immovable about that. We need to be steadfast about that, to not let anything that, in, that we encounter take us off course, but instead stay immovable, stationed, firmly positioned. Ephesians 6 goes on to say that we, having done all to stand, stand therefore. 
Now, the way we can stand, you need to read that whole uh, passage in context, Ephesians 6, beginning in verse 10. It's talking about the full armor of God. Why do we need armor? We need armor because God is telling us we will face trials, tribulations, and battles. But here's the good news. The battle is not owned by us. The battle is the Lord's, and it's his battle. We have to be soldiers in his army and we navigate through that. We need to stand firm. We need to be steadfast on his word and his truth and be immovable about that. There's no gray area in this regard. We need to be solid. So when the enemy comes, that's how we can rise up and stand and have faith and say, get behind me, Satan. That's where we can say, I resist you, as the scripture says, Satan, and you must leave. You must flee. That's where the scripture says we have authority to tread on the head of the serpent. This is, these are the promises of God. These are the things we should stand steadfast on. The enemy comes why? To kill and steal and destroy. He's trying to steal your calling. He's trying to steal your promises and you're walking in a place of promise. I'm telling you today, stand when the winds and the storms of life come because you are standing in good territory on good ground if you are aligning with God and you're looking up to him, the Bible says. Look up, look up. Get your sit, sit your eyes off of your situation and your circumstance, but look up to him from where your help comes from. Your help, it comes from the Lord. So stand firm because why? Because it should be our resolve, our obligation, our action. And then thirdly, our last point, is that we can stand because we know that we know that we have a commission, that God has commissioned us. He is the ultimate commander-in-chief, and he has given us authority to walk on this earth and to feel, fulfill the calling he has placed in our lives. So the Bible tells us that we should walk worthy of that calling. He's also conveying that to all of us that we should walk worthy of our calling. The plans and purposes God have for us, he's called some, he says, to be teachers, some to be preachers, some to be evangelists, some to prophesy. All of the gifts of the Spirit, he's given to us. We need to align with the gifts that are birthed inside of us by God Almighty, and we get to walk worthy of those things. And if we're not well studied in those, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Pray without ceasing till God Almighty who will guide and direct you. Lean into him and not unto your own understanding. My life verse, James 1, 5. Hey, if you lack wisdom, ask and he'll be faithful to give you that which you need. God is not a man that he should lie, but he is God Almighty. He is sovereign and his word endures, his love endures forever. His truth doesn't waver, but it's solid. We should not be tossed. Let's turn to Ephesians. We're talking about standing. We're talking about standing your ground here. So I want to turn to Ephesians in chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And first of all, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. I therefore, this is Paul talking, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Walking worthy of our calling. These words that are described of what it looks like to walk worthy of your calling are words of humility. The Bible throughout says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You know, we seek him humbly and he responds mightily. We need to walk not with our heads down, but in reverence of our Lord God. We should be in awe of him and know that if he is for us, no one can be against us. I want to then go down a little bit further into Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22 through 24. It says this, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You see what God's directing us to do? Part of standing 
is to say for me to be able to stand and endure the storms of life, the attacks of the enemy, the battle isn't mine, but it is a battle and we find ourselves in it. We need to do what? We need to armor ourselves with the full armor of God and then we need to be prepared to stand and we need to do what? We need to put off the old person, the old man. We need to put off anything that is not aligned with the word of God and the will of God for our lives. And we need to turn away from that which is darkness and turn towards his glorious light. And not just turn towards it, but walk towards it, to walk in it, to make sure that he is ordering our steps, that we're not veering to the right or the left. We're not having an unstable mind or being double-minded about his word and the truth of it, but we are standing in faith, firmly planted with our feet on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us and through the sonship of God the Father who is our heavenly Abba Father. We can walk and we can stand. So I just want to encourage you that we need to renew our minds. We need to renew our minds. When corruption comes in, when deceit comes in, when the enemy tries to tell us lies about who we are, what God has promised to us, what God's promises are, if the enemy tried to tempt Jesus Christ, the Son of God, through the word, he's going to try to do the same to us. But Jesus defeated him by saying the truth, because the truth is what sets you free. The truth is what will enable you to stand. The truth is, is this written word of the living God. Get this inside of you. It will help you to endure the things and the fiery darts of the devil. So I want to conclude with this and just say, you know what? God has equipped you to stand your ground. He's equipped you because he's promised you it, first of all. And God's promises are all yes and amen, and they're true, and we can take them to the bank. We can count on them. Secondly, it's our resolve. We need to be resolved. We can stand because we're going to make a choice. We're going to stand. And having done all the stand, the Bible says, stand therefore. Stand. We will stand, and we will not be moved. There's a song, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. How can we not be shaken? Have our feet based and, and firmly planted on solid ground, which is God and this Bible, this truth, standing on the word, standing on the promises of God, and then saying, you know what? I will not be moved by what I see. I'm not going to move and I'm not going to act. I'm not going to walk by, by my sight, but by faith, by faith in a trustworthy good, good father who is working things out for my good, who is for me and not against me. And then finally, I am not going to accept anything less than walking and standing firm on the calling in my life and the commission that God has given to me. I'm going to trust in his promise. I'm going to have the resolve to stand. And then I'm going to walk in the calling that he's given me because I know that he is with me. And he will never leave me and he will never forsake me. So I'm encouraging you to, for today, friend, you know, stand, stand your ground. When the enemy comes against you, you have a greater God that is with you. And if God be for you, who can stand against you? You can stand, stand your ground. Now go, won't you? And be blessed. Thank you for joining us at Restoration Ministries today. I'm Pastor Jeff. Look forward to seeing you again. Hey, I want to encourage you. Check out our podcast. They come out on Thursdays. We have two episodes and a third coming. I think you'll really enjoy them.